scaffolding grade-level content for English learners. As remote learning continues across the U.S. and around the world, teachers have experienced many successes as well as challenges. Although at this point most classes are probably not on pace with grade-level standards, it is still important that the work given to English learners reflects those standards. Legally, English learners are entitled to equal educational opportunities, which include access to grade-level curricula. I'd like to believe that few classrooms today have English learners working on mindless worksheets while other students are studying standards-based, rigorous content. All students, English learners and English speakers alike, should be learning the same content. The idea that English learners aren't ready for grade-level material isn't supported by research. In fact, literacy research tells us that students learn better with challenging text. Providing scaffolding for English learners allows access to challenging texts. The following are three ways to help English learners access grade-level content. They're effective when teaching face-to-face, -face, but also can be adapted for remote learning. First, be clear. This may seem like a no-brainer, but expressing oneself in a way that's easily understood is more challenging than it may seem. Remember that grade-level content contains vocabulary and language forms that likely will be difficult for English learners to follow. While clear, concise speech is critical for English learners, it's good for all. Think of TED Talk speakers, newscasters, and other professional speakers. They speak clearly, enunciate, and limit the amount of information they give to listeners. Typically, they pause a bit between chunks of words to let listeners process their message. Make sure your presentation of information, and especially instructions for completing tasks, are well described, clear, and unambiguous. Also, consider posting a completed assignment for students to refer to in case they don't understand all of the language in your instructions. Another way to make sure your message is clear is through modeling and repetition. Using visuals to accompany speech is an effective practice that benefits all students. It's even more important to communicate clearly with students during remote learning. English learners may become frustrated or disengaged from learning if they can't follow your instructions or can't understand the presentation of content. When teaching skills, consider a process where you demonstrate what you're talking about, repeat the message several times in slightly different ways, and ask students to practice each step after teaching. Clearly spoken, recorded messages can be replayed so that students understand your message more completely and pick up what they may have missed the first time. Also, consider using the same routine for your lessons. Perhaps begin with a greeting, then state your message plainly and concisely, and end with a consistent closing. This type of structure enhances comprehension for English learners. Further, Make sure you choose words that are positive, encouraging, and affirming. With remote learning, a lot of communication is in writing. Without the visual cues that oral communication provides, written information can be difficult to understand. Be sure to double-check written instructions for clarity. The second way to support English learners is to explicitly teach vocabulary. Research on English learners demonstrates the value of having teachers select a set of academic vocabulary words and teach those words across several days using a variety of instructional activities. So which words should be selected to teach? Teach words that are necessary for understanding the text. These key vocabulary words may be bolded in the text, but there may be additional words necessary for understanding the text. Also teach words that are frequently used in the text. Teaching frequently used words provides multiple opportunities for students to see how those words are used in text. Also teach general academic words that likely will appear in other content area texts. Word lists may be consulted 
for selecting those cross-curricular academic terms that students will be exposed to across subject areas. Also teach words with multiple meanings. Students will encounter certain words across disciplines with different meanings. For example, the meaning of pound as a unit of weight in math differs from its meaning to hit in English language arts. Explicitly teaching the definitions of these words allows students to understand how words function in different contexts. Also, teach words with affixes. Many words are comprised of root words and affixes. For example, the word view changes meaning when the prefix re is added to make review. Teaching word parts gives students more bang for the buck. As they begin to understand the meaning of common prefixes such as un, dis, and miss, and suffixes such as ism, ist, and si, and learn how those word parts alter the meaning of words, their vocabulary expands exponentially. Knowledge of word parts facilitates analysis of the meaning of unknown words. The research recommendations just outlined were based on in-class instruction. With remote learning, explicit vocabulary teaching might be limited to those words that are necessary for understanding the text and teaching word parts, which is a valuable investment of time in terms of vocabulary payoff. Fortunately, there are lots of free and inexpensive vocabulary apps available so that important vocabulary practice can continue at home. Most provide a word's pronunciation, its definition, translation, and a visual of the word. Many vocabulary apps work on phones as well as tablets. So far, we've talked about two ways to support English learners. One is to be clear, and the second is to explicitly teach vocabulary. The third way is to provide supports for reading text. Grade-level texts are typically challenging for English learners, so scaffolds for reading text are essential. Here are some ways to provide access for English learners. Audiobooks. Students listen to a text being read while they read along. Many commercial reading programs offer audiobooks, and there are numerous sites that offer free audiobooks to students. Also, teacher read aloud. To be most effective, teachers pause after reading a portion of text, ask questions, and highlight key vocabulary. Comprehension is enhanced when teachers jot illustrations or use graphics to help English learners understand and remember words and concepts. Another scaffold is partner reading. This might be done using leveled readers with younger students, and with older students, consider read aloud, think, and summarize. In this process, each student reads a paragraph and summarizes it. For example, partner A reads and orally summarizes, while partner B listens and asks clarification questions. Then partner B reads and summarizes. This technique is effective because students collaboratively figure out the meaning of the text through their discussion. Another scaffold is SQP2RS, or Squeepers. This is a process for reading expository text that has been shown to improve reading comprehension. The steps are as follows. Survey. Students individually preview and scan the text to be read for about one minute to determine key concepts that will be learned. Question. In groups, students generate questions likely to be answered by reading the text. Predict. Students come up with three or four key concepts they predict they'll learn while reading. Read. While reading, students mark answers to their generated questions using sticky notes or highlighters. Respond. Students discuss and answer the questions that were generated by the class. Summarize. Orally or in writing, students summarize the text's key concepts. The SIOP website offers free, downloadable posters that outline each step of Squeepers. The posters are useful for teaching Squeepers, as well as for student reference as they begin to use the process independently. 
Scaffolding grade-level text online is challenging, no doubt. Some of the suggestions presented here can be adapted for remote learning. Audiobooks and teacher read-alouds lend themselves well to remote learning. To add interest and motivation, have a guest reader, such as a member of your own family, do a read-aloud, or arrange for older students in your school to read to your students. The text can be read live while students read along, or a recording app allows students to listen and read along at their convenience. Partner reading can be done using platforms such as Google Classroom or Zoom. You might have students read aloud and record it, or assign breakout groups of students by level and work with each group to scaffold their reading. Squeepers has been used successfully online, but it needs to be done live. First provide a piece of text to each student and begin in whole group for the survey or preview. Then students are assigned to breakout rooms to do their question generation and make predictions. For reading the text, use whatever suits your situation, partner reading, individual, or students in groups with the teacher facilitating. Respond is then done in whole group so that everyone reviews and discusses the class's questions and predictions. Finally, students summarize by writing a couple of sentences or by drawing a picture to express their understanding, depending on their level of proficiency. If you or your students don't have access to texts or technology to use some of these grade level reading ideas, then during this time of remote learning, students can still work on skills related to reading that will continue to advance their cognitive skills, such as making TV watching productive by predicting, comparing characters, sequencing events, and so forth. There are many more ideas for helping English learners access grade level content in our book, Making Content Comprehensible for English Learners, the PSYOP model, which can be found at psyop.savis.com. In many ways, remote teaching is similar to teaching in a classroom. Good teaching requires teachers to build relationships with students, scaffold instruction, to check for comprehension, give meaningful feedback, and other proven practices. The basics are the same, but the delivery differs significantly. During remote teaching, learning may not exactly match the standards or content for your grade level, but the ideas presented here are intended to facilitate using grade level content in your lessons. For more information about teaching English learners, follow me on Twitter or visit my blog, www.janaischevaria.com. Thank you.